Welcome to Intuitive Connections, where spirituality and psychology meet to help you be your best and brightest self. I'm your host, Victoria Shaw, and in each episode, I'll help you to awaken your own inner wisdom, step into your power, and live a more divinely inspired life. You're here to let your inner light shine. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello and welcome to Intuitive Connection. Today, I want to address a topic that I've actually wanted to share with you guys for a really long time. And I wrote this down as a blog post, actually. So that might be coming out to you around the same time this one goes live. But anyway, it's a topic that I've wanted to talk about for a long time. And one that became front and center for me again, a couple nights ago when I was, I've actually started dating again. <laughs> so that's a conversation for another day. But I was on the phone with a new person that I had met. So a first phone date and explaining to him what I do for a living. And, you know, when I said the word psychic, because oftentimes what I do when people ask me, what do you do for a living? I always say I'm an intuitive counselor. And if they don't know what that means, I explain, well, it's a mix between being a psychic and a psychotherapist, right? Because I got both of those things going on. And so he was very perceptive and he said to me, you know, I usually think of the term psychic as telling the future, but that doesn't sound like what you're talking about here, right? right? Because I don't see how those two things would go together. And it made me think about how I do 100% think of myself as a psychic and as someone who has multisensory awareness and tunes into things beyond our five senses and, and talks to spirit guides and all of that good stuff. But one thing that I don't really focus on doing very much is precognition, is future telling. And there are reasons for that. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to talk about why I'm a psychic who doesn't tell the future. And look, if you follow people or you are someone that focuses on precognition, that is totally fine. <laughs> no offense <laughs> meant. So I hope no offense taken. But for me, there are some fundamental reasons why my focus is not, nor has it ever been on future predictions. And I think that they're kind of important to share. Well, the first one is, is not my particular gift. And different people will tune into different things. And we all have our own unique gifts. And for me, future telling is just, it's just not really the first thing that pops into my mind when I tune into someone's energy and guidance and I offer them a reading. Now, occasionally, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, things will come through that are of, you know, a future in nature. Occasionally, I will get these hits. And, and usually, it looks something to the effect of, hey, if you continue on this path, this is where you might be heading. And I think that precognition is always about that, by the way. And even when I was a child and I did have a parent that would go to psychics and I remember having the deep understanding within myself uh, when I would ask myself this question of, well, you know, how do you know the future if we have free will, right? The answer is you don't because everything is in constant flux, but we kind of can read the probabilities. So you can read the direction that something is heading based on what's happening now. And that's all precognition is. That is all it is. It's feeling into a potential probable future path based on the now. And the now is always changeable. So when someone tells you the future, it is not set in stone. It can't be set in stone because you have free will. And everyone involved has free will and things are in a constant state of change and can constantly change, right? And a constant flux. And so future predictions are always based on reading into the probabilities. That's it. And so I understood that. What I didn't understand at the time that I do understand now is this idea of the law of attraction and the idea of we create and manifest our future, right? Based on our expectations, based on what we believe. Therefore, when someone gives you a future prediction and deepens your belief that that's going to happen, it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So as someone who, you know, is guiding people, we want to be really, really careful, right? That we are not creating self-fulfilling prophecies, particularly if our predictions are more fear-based. Now, my guys have showed me 
and I think this is fascinating that, you know, years ago in certain traditions, the oracles, right, or the future tellers of a community when it was a thing that was, you know, revered and, and a role that one could take. And there were definitely societies where, you know, there were oracles, shamans, future tellers, where that was kind of a job. Back in those times, in some cases, the oracle or the advisor right? Because sometimes they were advisors, could get really, really tricky. They could, if you came from a fear-based place, right? Where their job was on the line about getting the right predictions and also making themselves useful and valuable, they could sometimes, you know, go a little bit in the unhelpful direction of, you know, consciously or unconsciously co-creating fearful events, you know, or problems, which they would then have to be the ones to solve, right? So they could predict things that they knew, you know, if I have this prediction, and again, they may not have been conscious of the law of attraction, they may not have been doing it on purpose, but they may have been lending their energy and attention towards you know, a probable end that A, would get people's attention and make them valuable and important, right? But also, you know, validate what they said, validate their predictions because that validation of their predictions, right, that was their credibility. But I think that's still the case now, right, when we're wound up with the idea of doing future predictions. We want to really be careful not to have our ego involved, right? Ooh, look, I was right. So an example of how ego can sometimes get in our way, right, when we are receiving and communicating intuitive information is an experience I had not so long ago with the doctor that I've worked with. And, you know, the doctor himself is pretty intuitive. And when you walk into his office for the first time, he will just start spewing, you know, intuitive predictions and readings at you, which, you know, is neither here nor there. And the first time I saw him, he immediately tuned into marital things and said to me, you know, well, what's up with your marriage? And um, we had a little conversation about that. And this was a, a few years, quite a few years before I was really ready to pull the plug on that relationship. And a few years later, I saw him again. And I said, you know, it it came true. That is what happened. And his response was a little mind blowing for me. And again, you know, I might have kind of invited it and and been thinking that he was going to do this. But, but anyway, his response was, yay, you know, wow, that was a great hit. You know, I, I was right on, wasn't I? And that was really, you know, that was surprising for me because again, that prediction was not such a a thing that most people would think was a good thing. And, And the correct response there would have been like, hey, I'm really sorry that happened, you know, hate to be right on that one. Right. But I think that this can happen for us sometimes. And I think that, you know, that future telling, it can very quickly go into ego. So that is one of the reasons why I don't typically do it. And the second reason is, as I said before, and I don't think this was in my case at all, but when we are oriented towards a particular outcome and, you know, someone's prediction increases our believability of that outcome, then they are also contributing to the way that we co-create our future. And to me, to some extent, they are co-opting or influencing our free will. Now, nobody can take your free will away from you. You always got it, but we always want to honor it. So future predictions can sometimes take us away from that. And again, I also find that a lot of people that are doing future predictions are doing it from an ego-based or fear-based perspective, right? Where they're saying, I can tell you what's going to happen to prevent, to protect you, to have you be safe, to have you be okay, to have you be prepared, to have you be in the now. And sometimes that's helpful. And sometimes it's really not. But there's another powerful reason why I tend not to be in the business of predicting the future. And that is because of the reasons that people often want to know. And oftentimes we want to know the future because we are not comfortable sitting with the unknown. And the unknown is a fundamental and important part of this human experience, right? It's an important part of life. And though we are often given little glimmers of, you know, that deeper wisdom, and and sometimes we are often also given glimmers of a potential future or a path to follow, when we can't sit with the unknown at all, and we can't let go of that control that our ego and our mind wants to have of everything, we're going to be living from our ego and not from our soul. And I'm in the business of helping people live from their soul, right? To live in more spiritual alignment. And to do so, you have to let go to some extent of the need to know and control everything. 
And oftentimes, people that want to know the future, what they want is that sense of control because they're not comfortable not knowing. I often teach about intuition, and and you've probably heard me, if you listen to this podcast a lot or follow me other places, you've probably heard me use this phrase a bunch of times. But with your intuition, I always say you get what you get and you don't get upset, right? You agree when you go into this human form to cover your eyes, to put on the blindfold, and then you get the little nuggets of wisdom that you are ready to have in the now, right? The ones that are going to be most useful for you the ones that most jibe with your current level of understanding, the ones that are really going to help you stay aligned with your soul's path. If you were to get all the answers at once, it would blow your mind. It would blow your mind and it probably wouldn't be helpful or interesting or useful at all. Moreover, again, sometimes you can't get all the answers at once because you need it kind of dripped out, right? So you can follow the little breadcrumbs because we grow and expand with each little step. And if you saw the whole route in advance, it wouldn't even work because sometimes you take three steps to the right and where, you know, originally you might have thought you were going to go all the way over in that direction, you know, those three steps over the right makes you think, you know, I think I actually want to go left, right? And the map and the path changes. Again, that's what free will is all about. And so we don't get the whole plan. We don't get the whole program. Like our intuition, our guidance will give us exactly what we need in the now. And the more that we can agree to that and allow that and align with that, the more joyous and soulful and inspiring our life becomes. But that does mean that our ego needs to relax a little teeny bit and be a little more comfortable in that space of not always knowing. Now, years ago, I had a teacher. And she had been a professional psychic for years, and then she became an astrologer, and then she moved on to being a life coach. (sighs) And what she said about her first two careers, and she was an astrologer, I think she still is actually, (laughs) but what she said about calling herself a professional psychic, what she quickly got tired of was she said, the number one reason that people would call and make an appointment was for reassurance. And she said, this is true of, of astrology readings as well. They'd meet a new guy and they would want to know he's the one, right? Or they would, you know, someone's sick and in the hospital and they want to know this person's going to be okay, aren't they? And she said this wasn't a really great business to be in because a lot of times the answers she was getting were not so great. And to be in that business of reassurance at all, you know, it's, it's not really a good business. <laughs> it's not really a good business. And, you know, I can offer reassurance to all people all the time. It's all going to be okay. It's already okay. In fact, no matter what happens, you are beautiful, you are lovable, and you are safe, and you are whole, and you are well, because that is the truth of who you really are. Now, sometimes life might not feel that way, or those facts might not be apparent when we look around us, but that is the inherent truth of who and what you really are. So I can promise you it's all okay. It's going to be okay, and it's never going to stop being okay right? Because you are okayness <laughs> incarnate. No, you are more than okay. You are amazing. You are amazing, my beautiful friends. Huh. Okay, so there we go. But when it comes to a particular problem or a particular question or, or something, you know, that you're really worried or afraid about for me to tell you you're going to be okay, and I still will, you're going to be okay. I promise you're going to get through this. It's going to be all right, and you're going to thrive. But I don't necessarily need my Scooby powers to do that or my Spidey sense or whatever. I'd always say Scooby powers and my my family used to make fun of me. They're like Scooby-Doo's major powers are just like eating Scooby snacks. But anyway, (laughs) I don't need my sixth sense to know that you're going to be okay. I mean, I can feel into that through my intuition and through my connection of my higher guidance. So what I really mean is though, I don't need to predict the future because the future has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it because what happens in that outside world really has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with your well-being unless you decide to make it that way, right? You are well and whole and complete no matter what. (sighs) And, you know, as a friend, I can also say I think it's going to be okay, right? Because why not? It feels good. And that's kind of what we want to do too, right? Because again, you don't necessarily, even if you're feeling that a potential is going in a certain direction, if there's nothing that anyone can do about it, you don't necessarily want to feed the beast. We don't want to be that one that says, you know, 
you're right. I told you if you kept drinking, you were going to like, yep, you were going to get sick. And look, you got sick. Like, ew, (laughs) we don't want to be that person, right? That's just ego. So one of the reasons why I don't think that, you know, I want to be in the business of reassurance or not reassurance is because it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It truly is. And the guidance that I want to receive for people is the stuff they can actually use, the stuff they can actually use to make the choices that are, you know, the wisest choices forever they are in their lives right now and to receive the guidance that they need to focus and thrive in the now. And it is very rarely, as I see it, that the future has anything to do with that. Okay? We can almost always focus on what we need to do in the now. True story. I remember years ago, and I don't think I've told the story before on the show, but it gives you a little example. I had just started doing this work. And I had a friend who was a younger guy and his girlfriend, or I think his fiance, either one, they're married now, um, was applying to medical school. And she was super, 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 super nervous about whether or not she was going to get in. And so he had this great idea that he wanted to book a session with me uh, to talk to her about that. And, you know, I just started, I was just collecting money for this. It would have been great to have another client, but of course, (laughs) something, (laughs) something in my little uh, mind went ding, 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 ding. And I said to him, I said, you know, let's call him John. Uh, John, you know, I think this is so sweet that you want to do this for your girlfriend, but I have a question for you. You know, does she have the grades to go to med school? And he's like, oh yeah, my God. Yeah. She's a straight A student. I'm like, okay. How about her MCATs? Are they good? And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, they're really competitive. She's got really strong MCATs. I'm like, recommendations? And he's like, oh, yeah, got those two. <sighs> and I said, and, and has she applied to a range of schools? You know, the top ones, but some safeties. And he's like, yeah, oh, yeah, she's, she's good there too. And I said, okay, so what exactly makes you think or, or makes her think that she won't get into med school? And he stopped. And he's like, hmm, I don't know. I think she's just nervous, you know, because she doesn't know. And then I said, well, John, what if she schedules a session with me and the guides say, you know, it comes through that she's not going to go to med school, that she's not going to get in? You know, is that information that you, you know, want to buy her for Christmas? <laughs> and he's like, uh, no. And I said, you know, it sounds to me like there's every reasonable expectation that, you know, she is going to get into med school. And she did. And she's a doctor now. But I'm not sure like what she really probably wants from this session is just that reassurance and and I can't really necessarily provide that for her, right? I could give her information about what schools to apply to, but she already knows and what steps to take, but she already knows. But the yes or no question of am I going to get in, she doesn't really truly want that answer until she lives it, does she? And I could certainly say based on everything that she just told me, she's likely to get in. And I'm sure you've said that before. And anyway, you you know how the story ends, right? He did not book the session. So I talked myself out of, I don't know what I was charging at the time, a hundred bucks. But, you know, it was it was all in the service of something good because again, it wouldn't have served. It wouldn't have served. The best case scenario is I tune in and I'm like, yeah, it looks like you're going to med school and she would have felt really good, but she still wouldn't have known, right? So it would have been a temporary like fix, but it it wouldn't have gotten the job done. And, you know, there's always that possibility, right, that it wouldn't have been good news. And then I would have risked co-creating a future for her that, you know, was not the one she was looking for. So, again, when we want to know the future, be aware. Sometimes it is better to sit with the unknown because, really, she just needed to wait until she got in, right? And that's okay. There are a few circumstances where... I do occasionally get precognitive information and where I think it's really helpful. And I think it's really helpful too of some of my friends and colleagues that do this more professionally as a living, right? Where they they do like energy reads, right? What's the energy like moving forward in the following year? Like what are some of the things that could be happening in the pipeline? And that can be really, really interesting, especially if they're kind of vague and the person isn't having so much ego that they, they need to say what is going to be specifically so that they could be right or wrong. 
along, but they're feeling into the information that, you know, might be helpful for us to have in advance so that we can navigate what's coming down the pipeline. And sometimes too, I will be given information for someone about something that's potentially coming down the pipeline so that they can orient themselves towards that. And I've had information for me as well of things that are coming down the pipeline, things that are in a very probable, highly probable future that are heading my way that when I start to get the glimmers, it prepares me. It just prepares me. It orients me. It aligns me with what's coming so that I can be prepared when it happens. And and friends, this does not happen from a fear-based place. This does not happen the way our mind tells us, oh my gosh, you know, here are all the thousands of things that could go wrong and we're going to tell you all these things so you won't be surprised and in the meantime you can be marinating in all the possible horrible things that could happen and you know live in a constant state of anxiety that's not what I'm talking about don't do that and if you are doing that give yourself a big hug right now and then let's shift our attention okay So it's more just about kind of orienting you towards what's coming in a really helpful and loving way so that you can be prepared and aligned with it. I often find this happens for me in my life when someone's about to pass away. I have had several precognitive flashes when I knew someone, you know, important to me or my life was going to pass. And it wasn't scary. And I think I've talked about this before and it wasn't awful. It was usually to prepare me. It was usually some information to know. The one that I share a lot was my husband. Well, I should say my soon to be former husband. We are in the separation mode. But anyway, he is French and um, his great aunt lives in France. And he was very close with this aunt. And we were visiting her with our family and she lived outside of Paris and there's a lot of traffic getting home on a Sunday night and we were going to leave a little early to beat the traffic and something told me, don't do it, stay. This is going to be the last time that y'all see her. So I said to my husband, I think we should stay. And he's like, okay, let's do it. And on the way home, I told him, you know, why I had that feeling. And he said, I had that feeling too. And it was the last time we saw her. And again, you know, as sad as that might seem, it was actually a beautiful gift because it wasn't a fear-based thing. It was an opportunity. And had we rushed to get back to Paris to beat the traffic, you know, we would have been deprived of those really special memories that he made with his beloved aunt. And so sometimes, you know, we will have those, those little flashes of things to come because again, it orients us, it prepares us, it gets us ready and it gets us to where we have chosen to be right on the higher sense and our human sense is just catching on. And that's often the case too, because remember friends, anything that you fear with your mind, your soul is accepted. Your soul is, is down with it. Your soul knows how life is going to shake out. And so that fear-based need to know is not aligned with our intuitive knowing, which will give us what we need as we need it because it will enhance our lives, because it will enhance our lives. Got it? So I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover today. We've talked a little bit about what, how future telling works, why it works. We've talked a little bit about where the problems lie. And we've also talked, I hope, or I'm going to say now about that potential, that temptation to give our power away to somebody else when we feel that we need to control the flow of life, right? When we feel like we need to know the future, when we feel like we need to be prepared in a fear-based kind of way, when we feel like we can't sit with the unknown. And again, oracles, guides, psychics, intuitives, whatever you want to call us can be of service all the time in helping all humans navigate their lives from that soul's perspective. But in order to do that, you have to let go of the need to know. You have to let go of the need to control and you have to understand that at the end of the day, the only moment that truly matters is now. And it's what you do in the now right? That really, truly counts. And then even when we get a little bit of a precognitive nudge, right? It's always about how we can use that to grow and thrive in the only moment that's real, the moment that you are experiencing now. All right. 
So I think that's all I got for this one. I'm so glad I finally sat down to record it because it's been bouncing around in my brain for so long. I can't wait to hear what you all think, what your experiences are. So please join us over in the Intuitive Connection community. Share your experiences there. Shoot me an email if you have any questions. You know, I always love to hear from you all. And I will see you again next week. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you found joy, strength, inspiration, and clarity from today's episode. If you'd like to learn more and connect with an amazing group of like-minded souls, please join us over on Facebook in the Intuitive Connection Community Facebook group, where we explore these topics in deeper detail, have additional live teachings, and host Facebook Lives with our amazing guests. I hope to see you there. And of course, if you want to learn more about me or the work that I do, please check out my webpage, victoriashawintuitive.com. Thank you so much again and namaste.